Thanks for joining us on FinPod and our latest edition of What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Hi, and welcome to this episode of What's New at CFI. My name's Ryan Spindley, SVP here at CFI. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Jeff Schmidt. Hey Jeff, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Um, I'm glad to be here personally. <laughs> Good, I'm doing really well. Thanks for ever so much. Um, so Jeff, what course are we going to be talking about today? We recently updated the course, Reading the Financial Statements. It's, it's brand new, hot off the press, just came out uh, within the past month. Oh, brilliant. And Jeff, why did we decide to update or refresh this course, Reading Financial Statements? Sure. Uh, a couple of reasons. The most important reason is we wanted to make it really hands-on, really, really, really practical. So as part of the course, we actually go through three different company filings. We do uh, two U.S. GAAP, and we even do a company that uses international financial reporting standards. And all of our exercises and the, the quiz at the end is all based on real world companies. So it's not fictitious, it's not made up. So you have to mm -hmm. deal with a lot of the real world nuances that you find when companies report. Oh, brilliant. So very, very practical. And it sounds like mm -hmm. the kind of topic that lots of different types of CFI learners would be interested in, quite yes. wide applicability. Okay. We, we go through a lot of tips and tricks. So even if you are a, a practitioner of reading financial statements, or if you're brand new to it, we've got mm -hmm. a lot of tips and tricks to go through, a lot of shortcuts uh, to memorize, to help help people navigate through financial statements. Okay. All right. Here's a question for you then, Jeff. Mm -hmm. What are some of those key tips for learners that are, that are particularly new to reading financial statements? Sure. The, the first thing I'd have to say is don't be intimidated. The uh, I'm based in the U.S., hmm. and I haven't read every uh, uh, company filing uh, of all companies in the U.S., but the shortest 10K, the 10K is the annual report yeah. in the United States. The shortest 10K I've ever seen is 90 pages, which is still pretty long. And the longest I've seen is probably in the 400 or 500 page area, and those are usually banks like J.P. Morgan Chase. They, they have huge filings. And then if you go uh, to Europe, for instance, and they file their annual report, those could be in these several hundred pages. So first thing, don't be intimidated. Uh, it, it's very easy when you see e even a 90-page 10K. It's very easy to get intimidated, get bogged down, get stressed. So don't do that. Uh, but here's some other kind of key tips, okay? So read through the business overview first, okay? Now, this assumes that you're relatively new to the company and reading financial statements. That business overview is very, very crucial. Okay? Now, if you already happen to understand the industry or the business really well, may maybe just give it a glance. Mm -hmm. Then move on to the management discussion and analysis or the MDNA section. And this is an opportunity for management to discuss its past fiscal year. It, it compares it to previous years. Uh, it explains why one number might be up or one number might be lower. It's That's absolutely crucial to read, the management discussion and analysis. Read those before even going to the financial statements. Mm -hmm. And as always with any skill, repetition is always key. So even if it's just one company, you pick one company, read several years worth of their 10K or their annual report. And you'll see a lot of similarities. You'll see that they're all basically laid out in the same order, especially in the US when you know a specific section is required to have the MDNA. Wow, uh, Jeff, those are, some, those are some really, really good tips there. So let's say that I'm a, a learner and I want to start reading financial statements and filings. Is there a good way that you can suggest that I actually start doing this? Yes. Um, what I would recommend is pick a company that you are interested in and you know something about. You don't have to, to be an expert. No one's 
expecting you to be a, a world-class analyst. Just pick a company that you know. You know their products or Apple. Uh, one, of, one of the financial statements that we go through in the course is Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Straightforward business model. Millions of people go to Starbucks every day. Just, but just pick a company that's relatively straightforward, relatively easy to understand, and something that you're interested in. Because if you're interested in something, you're going to be, you're going to be extra diligent when you go through the financial statements. I don't pick something obscure like a regulated utility or oil and gas or, or something that no one really understands unless you have some kind of specialized industry knowledge. So just yeah. pick a company, uh, download its filings, and just dive in. And again, it, it, it can get a little repetitive, um, but you will build up that muscle memory really, really, really quickly. And you'll start being able to navigate. And you'll see the shortcuts in our course. You'll be like, oh, I'm just going to quickly jump to this section. Mm. Boom. There you are. Awesome. Hey, Jeff, that sounds like some really, really good advice there. I guess I've got a question. My last question for you, actually, is, mm. is there any sections that's part of a company's financial statements that's often overlooked that you can maybe recommend that people actually spend some time reviewing? Uh, there's, there's a few. Um, so in the U S just because I'm just more familiar with reading U S gap 10 K's and 10 Q's, um, there's always a huge section on risk factors. So for instance, in Starbucks, uh, managing their brand is very important. The Starbucks brand is their business effectively. Yeah. Uh, they also discuss things like foodborne illnesses, right? If somebody gets sick uh, due to some E. coli outbreak or something, uh, that could negatively impact the business. So there's a litany of, of risk factors, and that's often overlooked, but it's really important, and it helps you understand the business and some of the pressures the business faces that you have to think about. Uh, another one, uh, the notes to the financial statements. So the financial statements are very, very important, but the notes are almost just as important as these statements themselves. Um, you go through the notes, you can find a lot more details, you know, types of debt. You know, if you look at a balance sheet, you're just, you see one line out of debt. Yeah. But if you go to the debt footnote, you'll see, you know, all of the debt tranches the company might have. And you can think about, okay, did they have enough money to pay off this debt? Uh, maybe it's due in two years. Maybe they should think about refinancing it. So the the, the footnotes are extremely important. Again, yeah. almost as important as the financial statements themselves. And the last, and this one is a little advanced. So I, I'm only saying this uh, after you feel really comfortable with financial statements. Mm. Uh, in annual reports, uh, especially non-U.S. annual reports, there's usually a significant discussion on management compensation. Mm. And what you can do, you can go through there and you can think critically about how management is compensated. Uh, if they're compensated, for instance, uh, just on revenue growth, well, revenue growth is easy. Just go buy a bunch of companies. Just do engage in a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Revenue growth will go up. Uh, but that doesn't mean it actually adds value to the company. So you can kind of think, uh, you know, if you look at the management compensation plan, you start to think critically, okay, what are they, uh, what, what is management rewarded on and how might that influence their decision-making uh, mm -hmm. as they manage the business? Brilliant. Jeff, those are some fantastic insights for our listeners. Thanks. Oh, no, thank you. Um, all right then, so that's our newly refreshed course, our updated course called Reading Financial Statements. Jeff, thanks ever so much for taking through though that new course refresh, and thanks for ask, uh, answering my questions. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully, um, we'll have you back soon for another What's New at CFI podcast. Sounds great. Happy to be here. Brilliant. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.